Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hi. My name is Matt Kattenberg. Welcome to the Millennium Stage. Uh, we're so excited to be back tonight with another performance uh, we're presenting as part of our Broadway series. The Broadway series is presented in cooperation with ASCAP, and this year they are celebrating their centennial. So without further ado, I want to turn it over to our good friend Michael Kirker. He is the director of musical theater for ASCAP. Please welcome him, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Kirker. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. I want to thank everyone at the Kennedy Center, especially Tim Prestridge, for inviting ASCAP to kick off our centennial here at the Kennedy Center. ASCAP is the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, and our members represent the finest of American music. Uh, and while ASCAP uh, represents all genres of music, pop, rock, rap, Latin, country, uh, film music, we're here at the Kennedy Center to celebrate 100 years of American musical theater and 100 years of great ASCAP composers and lyricists. This is our fourth night, and tonight we will be celebrating the years 1964 through 1988. It's my pleasure to introduce our special guest tonight to perform those songs. He's truly one of the best friends ASCAP has ever had. Songwriters love him, ASCAP songwriters love him because of his acting skills and his singing skills. Uh, he's one of the great theater performers. You might have seen him as one of the original plaids in Forever Plaid. His other Broadway productions include Falsettos and Ragtime. And he's also had a uh, quite important career, distinguished career in opera. In fact, he just came back from Texas doing a few performances of Deflator Mouse. Please welcome our good friend, Jason Grah.
<laughs> wow, welcome to ASCAP Centennial on Broadway, the third night. How? Oh, Ah, uh, did Ron Raines play the oboe? I don't think so. Listen, Michael Kirker, our illustrious producer, has given me the unenviable task of covering all Broadway shows between 1964 and 1988 in 59 minutes. <laughs> there were literally, I think there were thousands of songs by ASCAP Broadway songwriters during that time, and we'd like to sing them all for you tonight. Hit it! All right, we'll just sing a few of them. <laughs> uh oh, we're playing their songs. Oh, yes, we're playing their songs. And when we're playing their songs, everybody's got a shh, shh, shh. Don't say a word now, listen to that sweet melody. I'm happy to say, in my own humble way, not a single note of that was written by me. Oh ho, they're playing their song, that table's humming along, that couple's half out the door, is coming back to hear more of my music. At first I thought this place was a dive. Uh, I chose it in haste, but they show they got taste, as long as they're playing their song. Oh gosh, John, yesterday we were in Los Angeles, California. Today we're in Washington, D.C. at the Kennedy Center, singing on the Millennium Stage, South, oh, for an audience who's coming to see us for free. Oh. If they could see me now, that little gang of mine. I'm eating fancy chow and drinking fancy wine. I'd like those stumble bums to see for a fact the kind of top drawer first rate chums I attract. All I can say is, wow, we look at where I am. Tonight we landed, pow, right in a pot of jam. What a setup, holy cow. They'd never believe it if my friends could see me now. We know tonight will be filled with delight Cause it's filled with the songs of classic Broadway Memorable songs that live in your heart With every tootsie tapping from the moment it starts Oh ho, we're playing those tunes, the songs that everyone croons We're gonna put on a show you ought to know that we'll be playing So plan on staying We'll be playing We'll be playing their songs Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. <laughs> ah, we're so, so excited to be here, and we have some very, very, very special guests for you tonight. You're in for such a treat. Uh, oh, uh, please say hello to my very, very special musical director, Mr. John Boswell. John is the finest musical director available. Thank you, Jason. Hey, old friend, are you okay? Old friend, what do you say? Old friend, are we or are we unique? We are. Time goes by, everything else keeps changing. You and I, we get continued next week. Most friends fade or they don't make the Great new ones are quickly made, and in a pinch, sure, they'll do. But us, old friend, what's to discuss? Old friend, here's to us. Who's like us? Damn few. Now, I want to go back and talk about the song before this, because I just cut a whole 
piece of patter uh, before this whole section. But luckily, it's being videoed, so <laughs> be my nightmare for the rest of my life. Thank you so much. Uh, they're playing our song was written by Marvin Hamlish, of course, uh, who just left us this year. Um, I had the great, great good fortune to work with Mr. Hamlish. Uh, here at the Kennedy Center, I sang with the National Symphony with him, and I first met Marvin at a party at Ted Kennedy's house. It was for the president of the Kennedy Center who was retiring, and uh, and um, what was so great about this was that um, Ted Kennedy was throwing this fabulous party for the president, and it was, um, it was his last time that he was going to be in office at the Kennedy Center, uh, if one is in office at the Kennedy Center. And um, Marvin asked me to sing this very funny song to the tune of, I am the very model of a modern major general. And so uh, he wrote dummy words, and it was pretty funny. And uh, afterwards, Colin Powell was in the audience, uh, Condoleezza Rice, my target audience. And uh, after the show was over, um, I was having a drink with Teddy at the bar. <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> and it was around 2003, and I said, so Ted, what do you think about your step-nephew-in-law becoming governor of California? And he said, God help us all. And don't you dare tell anyone I said that. <laughs> Secret safe. Anyway, it was an amazing, amazing experience to work with him. Uh, Sondheim. Sondheim had quite an illustrious career during the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and still is. Uh, he had funny thing happen on the way to the forum. Company, Follies, A Little Night Music, Pacific Overtures, Into the Woods, and my personal favorite was Merrily We Roll Along. Now, Merrily We Roll Along was not one of his biggest hits, but it opened at the Alvin Theater uh, in 1980. It had 44 previews and 16 performances, I believe. And it has got an incredible, insane following of people who just love the show, like myself. Uh, it's fascinating. For those of you who don't know the show, it's, it goes in reverse. It starts with the three major characters uh, are at the end of their lives, and it goes backwards. And it's fabulous. And the score is fabulous. And I was also grateful for Merrily We Roll Along because since it closed, it allowed me my Broadway debut at the Alvin Theater two months later in the show Do Black Patent Leather Shoes Really Reflect Up? <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was not an ASCAP show, so I will spare you singing a song from that show. We ran five performances in two weeks of previews, so Merrily was a huge hit comparatively. I love the score of Merrily We Roll Along, and this next song, I think, is quintessential Stephen Sondheim. <clears throat> it started out like a song. We started quiet and slow with no surprise and then one morning I woke to realize we had a good thing going it's not that nothing went wrong some angry moments of course but just a few and only moments no more because we knew we had this good thing going and if I wanted too much was that such a mistake at the time you never wanted enough all right tough I don't make that a crime. And as it's going along, you take for granted some love will wear away. We took for granted a lot, and still I say, it could have kept on growing, instead of just kept on 
we had a good thing going, going, going. All right, now, another huge songwriter during this time was Julie Stein. Fabulous. Julie Stein wrote Bells Are Ringing, Gypsy, you know, a few hits, and also Funny Girl. Now, no one here really needs to hear me sing anything from Funny Girl. But we have somebody here that is going to sing something from Funny Girl. She's fabulous. I've been such a fan of hers since I saw her in Nine. She played Claudia in Nine, the original Broadway company. That was before Nicole Kidman did the movie, even. And she is a fabulous performer. Please welcome Shelley Birch. Thank you so much. This is one of my very favorite songs from Funny Girl. I, actually, it's probably one of my most favorite songs ever, ever. Um, written by Julie Stein, lyrics by Bob Merrill. And unfortunately, which is Hollywood's way of always messing things up when they take a Broadway show and make it into a film, they cut this from the movie. Their mistake. My favorite song. I add two and two, the most simple addition, then swear that the figures are the much better comic than mathematician cause I'm better on stage than at intermission and as far as the man is concerned if I've been burned I haven't Learned. I know he's around when the sky and the ground start in ringing. I know that he's near by the thunder I hear in advance. His his words alone are the words that can start my heart singing. And his is the only music that makes me dance. He'll sleep and he'll rise in the light of two eyes that adore him. Bore him it might, but he won't leave my sight for a glance. In every way, every day I need less of myself. I need more him. Cause his is the only music that makes me dance. Cause his is the only music that makes me This is 
the dance section of our show. Tap your troubles away. You bounced a big check. Your mom has the vapors. Tap your troubles away. Your car had a wreck. They're serving you papers when you're the one that it always rains on. Simply try putting your merry chains on. Your boss just gave you the axe. There's years of back tax. You simply can't pay. When a sky full of crap always lands in your lap, make a curtsy and tap your troubles away. Dance break. get your blood pumping. <laughs> I love the dance. <laughs> that was by Jerry Herman. That was from Mac and Mabel, starring Robert Preston and Bernadette Peters. What a fabulous, fabulous score that is. Now, I want to do two songs from one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, this, these two composers were pop icon superstars when they came into the Broadway arena, and when they left, they were Broadway icon superstars, thanks to this show, Promises, Promises, written by Hal David and Bert Bacharach. Fabulous. Uh, Hal David served for many years as president of ASCAP, and it's just a fabulous show. It's based on The Apartment, starring Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine. Uh, I got to do it in Chicago with George Hearn, and it's, the score is fabulous, and I think you might recognize at least one of these next two songs. Did you ever stop, really stop, and take a look? Take a look, a really good look at yourself. I just took a peek, really peek, to tell the truth. Through my eyes, I don't look so good to myself. Half as big as life, that's me. But that's not the way I always mean to be. Half as big as life that's small, but I wasn't born to be looked at as five feet tall. No, not me. I know that inside of myself there's a man, the kind of man you would like if you were just willing to look. I've got lots of dreams, and my dreams will take me far, very far. A cover is not the whole book. Half as 
as big as life, they say. But they're going to see how wrong they are someday. Half as big as life, that's small. But deep in my heart, I can feel that I'm 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall. I want a lot, and I know that I'll have it all. Just like someone who's twice as big as Do you get when you fall in love? A girl with a pin to burst your bubble. That's what you get for all your trouble. I'll never fall in love again. I'll never fall in love again. What do you do when you kiss a girl? You get enough germs to catch pneumonia. After you do, she'll never phone you. I'll never fall in love again. I'll never fall in love again. Don't tell me what it's all about. Cause I've been there and I'm glad I'm out. Out of those chains, those chains that bind you. That is why I'm here to remind you. What do you get when you fall in love? You only get lies and pain and sorrow. So for at least until tomorrow, I'll never fall in love again. I'll never fall in love again. What do you get when you give your heart? You get it all broken up and battered. That's what you get, a heart that's shattered. I'll never fall in love again. I'll never fall in love again. Don't tell me what it's all about. Cause I've been there and I'm glad I'm out. Out of those chains, those chains that bind you. That is why I'm here to remind you. What do you get when you fall in love? You only get lies and pain and sorrow. So for at least until tomorrow, I'll never fall in love again. I'll never fall in love again. I'll never fall in love again. song by Jerry Herman from Dear World. If music is no longer lovely, if laughter is no longer lilting, if lovers are no longer loving, then I don't want to know. If summer is no longer carefree, if children are no longer singing, if people are no longer happy, then I don't want to know. Let me hide every truth from my eyes with the back of my hand. 
Let me live in a world full of lies With my head in the sand For my memories all are exciting My memories all are enchanted My memories burn in my head With a steady glow So if, my friends, if love is dead I don't want to No one writes life-affirming lyrics like Jerry Herman. I have been so, so fortunate to get to be in Jerry Herman's life for the last 15 years. Uh, thanks to ASCAP, I first worked with Jerry in a tour that we came through and performed here at the Kennedy Center in a show called Hello, Jerry. And it was a fabulous, fabulous experience. We traveled all over the country, and it was just a most amazing time. Jerry Herman's just the kind of guy you wished had written Hello, Dolly, in Maine. He is hilarious, he's heartfelt, he's soulful, he's got a wicked sense of humor, and he's supportive, and he's a survivor. No tribute to this period of time, or really any tribute as far as I'm concerned, would be complete without this next song from La Cajo Foal. Jerry wrote this in 1983, at the tail end of the sexual revolution, which in many ways would turn out to be the bitter end for far too many people. Today, the word revolution takes on a whole new meaning as young kids, college students, military men and women are literally being bullied to death for being who they are and what they are. I don't know if Jerry Herman realized when he wrote this next song in 1983 that he was writing an anthem for the ages. I am what I am. I am my own special creation. So come, take a look. Give me the hook or the ovation. It's my world that I want to have a little pride in. My world. And it's not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say, hey world, I am what I am. I am what I am. I don't want praise. I don't want pity. I bang my own drum. Some think it's noise. I think it's pretty. And so what if I love each feather and each spangle? Why not try and see things from a different angle? Your life is a sham till you can shout out loud, I am what I am. I am what I am, and what I am needs no excuses. I deal my own deck, sometimes the ace, sometimes the deuces. One life, and there's no return and no deposit. One life, so it's time to open up your closet. Life's not worth a damn till you can say, Hey, world, I have what I
Thank you. Ah. These next seven songs, I'm just kidding. I have one more song to sing before I introduce our really, really, really special guest. Uh, this song is from a show called Two by Two. Anybody know that show? Okay, one. It's a fabulous show with a fabulous score. It's about Noah's Ark. And it was in the 70s, and Danny Kaye starred in it. And the score, the, uh, the music was composed by Richard Rogers. And Richard Rogers started writing for Broadway in the 20s. His career spanned five decades. Incredible body of work. And this wasn't even his last show. And the lyrics were by Martin Sharnan. Such a beautiful song. And wait till you hear the way I sing it. I do not know a day I did not love you. I can't remember love not being there. The planting when the earth ran through your fingers. The harvest when the sun danced in your hair. I do not know a day I did not need you for sharing every moment that I spent. I needed you before I ever knew you, before I knew what needing someone meant. And if we ever were to face tomorrow, one thing alone is full and filled with salt. You will not know a day I do not love you. The way that I have loved you all Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome two-time Tony Award winning and a thousand time every other award winning, Mr. Martin Sharnan. Hey, Marty. All right. Splendid, <laughs> splendid, splendid. Martin Sharnan. Ah. Hello. Yay. Hey, Martin. Yes. Uh, Welcome back to your old stomping ground. Oh, it's, it's absolutely astonishing to, to be back here. Yeah, you were here uh, in some little show that you did a few years back. Uh, yes, I was here in 1977 uh, at the Eisenhower Theater uh, with a show that was in a little bit of trouble. Uh, so we had to make some changes in it, but it ultimately got straightened out. <laughs> yeah, looks and, like you worked the kinks out. And we worked the kinks out. We played five sold out weeks here. Uh, it was called Annie. And, uh, <laughs> and it still is. And it still is. <laughs> and it's been in 28 countries and, and many, many languages. And it's all right. It's got another revival on Broadway. There's a revival now, right? on Broadway now. This and is it's like going the 20th? This is the 35th anniversary revival. 35th yeah. anniversary revival, gotcha. Yeah, it's really wow. terrific. Thank Unbelievable. you. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank Unbelievable. You. And, and uh, it's just a thrill to be back here at the Kennedy Center, particularly in this, in this space. I, I remember the bar back there very well. <laughs> because at intermission, uh, when something wasn't working, we would find ourselves having a nice little conversation during the second act. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but it was re it's really terrific to be back. Can I here. ask you, before I uh, uh, leave you, I just wanted to ask you, uh, was it, was it, what was the experience like for you working with Richard Rogers? It was wonderful, actually. I'd heard all kinds of stories that said he would be very difficult on a new, young, 
lyric writer. He wasn't. Uh, he was uh, generous. He was gracious. The thing that I, I find, found the most disturbing was that I would work very hard on a lyric, uh, weeks maybe, sometimes even a couple of months, bring it to him, and he would say, go have a cup of coffee. And I would <laughs> go and have a cup of coffee, come back 15 minutes later, and there would be the tune. Uh, so he was an extremely wonderful, fast, facile, and, and gifted, gifted man. Whose idea was it to do a musical on, uh, uh, about Noah's Ark? Well, it was my idea. I brought it to, to Dick. It was from a play by Clifford Odets called The Flowering Peach that I had seen when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and the character of Noah reminded me a great deal of my father. He was feisty and tractable, usually right, uh, <laughs> difficult, very difficult to live with. Uh, and it was that that attracted me to the piece and then ultimately brought it to Dick, Peter Stone, who wrote 1776, uh -huh. among other great shows, uh, was a little librettist. And uh, I was on occasion asked what was the best thing about it. And of course, the answer was to be able to lure Dur Danny Kaye back into the theater after 23 years of having been away from the theater. <laughs> and then I'm often asked what was the worst thing about uh, Two by Two, and I say, being able to lure Danny Kaye back <laughs> into the theater. He was a very naughty fellow, but nevertheless, we're going to revive it, which is going to be interesting. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I'm going to uh, leave you to uh, uh, sing a lovely song. I'll oh, just be right, right behind you. And in case you don't know the words, I'll feed them to you. You'd be a bit surprised. <laughs> Songwriters singing their own song. <coughs> Complicated. Um, we had a little difficulty with Annie on occasion. Uh, to actually find the right opening number for the song. Origin for the show, the original opening number was a song called Hard Knock Life. Uh, that's how we opened here at the Kennedy Center. And after, I think, about a week of work, we discovered that the audience, while interested, was more interested in the specific problem that our leading ca character had. And so we took a big risk, and we took the second song in the show, which is really sort of a lullaby. And we turned it into the opening number of the song. Everybody said, well, you can't open a big, splashy Broadway musical with a lullaby. And we said, well, we'll give it a whack and see what happens. So forgive my croaking, but uh, this is how Annie opened finally and has played ever since. We did it here. Maybe far away, or maybe real nearby, he may be pouring her coffee, she may be straightening his tie. Maybe in a house all hidden by She's sitting playing piano. He's sitting paying a bill. Betcha they're young. Betcha they're smart. Bet they collect things like ashtrays and art. Betcha they're good. Why shouldn't they be? Their one mistake was giving up me. So. by Charles Strauss. Oh, betcha he reads, betcha she sews. Maybe she's made me a closet of clothes. Betcha they're good, good as can be. Their one mistake was giving up me. So maybe now it's time, and maybe when I wake, they'll be there calling me baby.
maybe thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir Thank you. We always want to say, please don't squeeze the Sharnan. <laughs> Not appropriate. Uh, oh my God, that was beautiful. Um, well, we've come to the end of our little play. Um, I want to say that uh, we've had such a great time here in your little hall, uh, your little cozy little room. Uh, I want to thank. ASCAP for having this fantastic series. What a ball for us to come out and get to sing these songs. And thank you to Michael Kirker for hiring us all. Thank you, Michael Kirker. And thank you to everybody here at the Millennium Stage who's been so fantastic, Evan and Matt and everybody who's run the lights and the sounds and sound and everything. We all just met this afternoon and we're all best friends already. Uh, oh, well, thanks, Martin. And especially thank you to the extremely handsome Martin Sharnan. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's the other side. Uh, yes, so we are going to do, oh, and I want to uh, thank one of the most extraordinary musical directors I've ever had the chance to work with, and I get to work with him a lot, and I'm really glad I do, Mr. John Boswell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Nice, good morning. <laughs> So thank you all, thank you all. Uh, could we have another round of applause for our very special guest stars, Shelley Birch and Martin Sharnan. We'd like to close with a song that I think you all might know. I know Martin knows it, I think the rest of us know it. Uh, if you turn to page 18 of your hymnals, you could sing along with us. We're gonna have Shelley start it out and please join. Oh, yes, Martin has something to say about this. It's interesting. I'm not on. Am I on? Yes. The only thing I do want to say about it is that this month, last month, uh, this particular musical number from Annie became one of the most so sung songs in the last two get decades. That's amazing. It's the top. In the top 100 songs top 100 in songs the world. In the world in Ever. the last two decades. That's Ever. this Ever. song. Brilliant. I gotta tell you, it's in the top 10 songs on my CD player at home that I've played in the last 10 years. <laughs> All right, Shelley, lead us in. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. You know, Martin, when I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick out my chin and grin and say, oh, the sun will come out, everybody, tomorrow. So you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Come what may.